I'm actually doing really well today. I'm doing the best I've ever been. Yeah. Um, I would say... I was at my lowest point 15 to 25 minutes ago. Absolutely. I was just going to bring that up. You took the words out of my mouth. I was ready to actually destroy a a man's life. (laughs) Like a man's life. Yes. I was actually ready to get on here and send everyone to one particular TikToker's TikTok page and say, kill him. And I said, Joe, it's not about tearing people down. We're bringing people up. And And I wasn't listening to you. I said, shut the fuck up. No, he deserves it. He deserves it. And I was like, that's, that's not it. That's not it for us. You were right. You were right. Because then I got a, I got a very nice message from a very nice, a very nice listener of the pod. And it, honestly changed my day it made me change my week and quite possibly change set me, it changed my life and it set my 26 year off in the right direction <gasps> because joe you're turning 26 happy birthday thank you, thank you so much you guys yeah Aww. i hate it i hate birthdays yeah it really there's something about it for you i want to kill is myself it? no joe you want to take a long I'm nap so... off the side of the building <laughs> i want to take a long long no. long nap yeah. of the tallest building I've ever seen. Yeah. Yes. But at the end of the day, you're aging and you look amazing. I, and that's not even me just I don't blowing shave smoke the up beard. your ass. I need a haircut. I have so many like I have like acne happening. The thing is about Joe, like honestly, Joe shaved his beard. He was like, I need to shave my beard. He shaves his beard. He's like, I fucking hate me. Yeah. My beard. And I hated it before. Joe was like begging to get a haircut because I got a little haircut. Right. Every time you get a haircut, you're like, should have got a haircut. Yeah. Well, I always want what I don't have. And then when you have it, I don't want it. I don't want it. Good children. It's better when we just use the vibrato. I loved that one. It was amazing. I kind of feel like I have a career as an Adam Lambert impersonator. You're kind of right. (laughs) I was going for Josh Groban. I always have American Idol. No. No, but might as well yes, be. because his American Idol performance of up, You Raise Me Up with the choir in the background. It raised me up. <laughs> yeah, I was it elevated. Me, period. I was levitating. Yes. I was levitating before Dual No, you were like out. eight years old. Like your eyes, you were doing, it's Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. You were floating into the air. And I was like, I actually need to be on that stage taking You Raise Me Up because I have to, I, I need that experience. You've been singing it ever since. That was actually the first song that I think publicly I sang in front of people. Where did you sing it? Seventh grade, I was on the school bus going to volleyball. This is why you were bullied. You're actually not wrong. You're literally not wrong. But I was like... Sitting in the seat by myself being like, when I am down. And someone caught wind and was like, wait, you actually sound really good. No. And I was like, yeah. Wait, you were like, I'm getting discovered. <laughs> I'm about to get I literally signed. got discovered on the bus by someone who already knew me. <laughs> sticking, you raised me up <laughs> silently to myself. No. Yeah, that was sweet. That's some sweet. Some would call it. Do you remember like being, I remember like being places and just like um, singing a little loudly to myself. Because I was like, I'm about to be the next Disney Channel star. Absolutely. Like, I went to the Hannah Montana concert, and I was like, if I sing louder than everyone else here, like, I'm going to get signed. She's going to bring you on stage. Yeah. I also used to do this thing at concerts where um, I remember, like, picking up the phone and being like, okay, like, good luck out there. Like, we're so excited to see you. Like, tell tell Billy Ray, like, we love him. Like, we'll see him after the show. <laughs> love you. Love you. Like, okay, Thank bye. You, bye, am. Hang up, and I'm like, and like the girls next to me think I'm cousins with Miley Cyrus. Yeah, so you're the coolest person you there. you used to know Miley Cyrus's cousin? Or like that was your big claim to fame for I a little did. bit? You were obsessed with Marshall that Marshall Cyrus. <laughs> I don't yes. believe that for a second. No, he literally went to lacrosse camp with me and he showed me his phone. And what was it? She followed him. On they what? Were... There was Instagram. no... Instagram. That was not a thing. In seventh grade, Joe is... Andrew... Instagram in seventh grade? What are you talking about? What are you saying? We got Instagram in 2012, 2013. And that's not a real Facebook account. He was not actually cousins with Miley Cyrus. Yeah, he literally was. No, he wasn't. He literally was. Like, it's actually like... He literally was. I saw pictures. What's his name again? Marshall Cyrus. Marshall Cyrus, if you're out there, I want to confirm or deny your blood relative status to Miley It was like, they were like third cousins or something. Oh, but they have the same last name? Yeah. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to Good Children. <laughs> hey, you guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where me and Andrew discuss our joint childhood in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and birthday parties that go along with it. Happy birthday oh my God. to you. 
Oh my god. Happy birthday Wait, to you. It's getting really close to the Happy ball. birthday, Mr. President. <gasps> Happy birthday to you. Are we this generation's Marilyn and JFK? I was thinking the <laughs> same exact happening? thing. Because I was. You, know how, you know how I'm going out, shot in the head. <laughs> you are going we out. It. We know it. Yes, and then and- 100 years from now, there will be someone wearing that, your Fleetwood Mac shirt. On the Met Gala red carpet, Fleetwood, either Fleetwood and Mac, we're gonna say, "Let her rest," or Christina Aguilera. Yeah, yes. don't tatter that shirt. Yeah. Oh. Birthdays. Birthdays. What are we talking about? How old were we when you started arriving to my parties and immediately helping my mom in the kitchen? I would say it was probably ten, and it was like get to work. Yes. And even to this day, oh, like yeah, it's like I literally came it. over within thirty seconds of me walking into that space. Patty was like, "Start chopping." Gar- what, what Didn't we- you saute shrimp? Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Start sauteing the shrimp, um, chop a little garlic, put a little oil, and I was like, this is actually what I was meant to do. Yeah. Was to be and in the kitchen. you love doing it. Love it. Please. Taking it back to our childhood even more. Yeah. Um, is there a particular birthday party genre yeah. that you feel like left the greatest impact on you as a young versioning gay boy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I would say the gymnastics parties. Yeah. Gymnastics parties for me, like, it was an out-of-body experience because, like, I... You wished that you were doing it. I wish I was an time. Olympian. Yeah. Exactly. You are Gabby Douglas. You I'm are Gabby. Miles. I am... This girl's on fire. And... Yeah. Yes. Because when I was there, Stout and All, doing a little flip, you might as well have, I might as well have been doing a ball. The girls who host gymnastics parties as kids are the greatest allies you could possibly have. 100%. Because there is no other opportunity for a young gay boy to say, I want to go to the gymnastics studio. Mm-hmm. Except by saying like, oh yeah, because Sarah is having a party there. If you wanted to be cool, you're like, they're having a party at the gymnastics I can't studio. I they have to go to a gymnastics party. I don't want to have to go. I'm there. I'm like, my face, I'm beaming. I'm your beaming socks here. are being sucked off of your feet from yeah. the, the foam pit. The f- okay. The foam pit's scary. The foam pit was the only time that I've actually ever experienced breathlessness like that. And you're afraid but, of drowning and sharks. Yes, because you jump in that foam pit. You're like... Where the fuck am I? <laughs> you're like swallowed hole. You swallowed <laughs> hole. You're like trying to dig your way out of that yeah. foam pit. And, and then you, us jumping in that foam pit, we're dense. Yeah, we're, we, were, we sunk <laughs> right to the bottom. Right to the bottom. And like, then you have to actually pull your body up. It's yes. kind of like, it's worse than getting out of a pool. I feel like there's like an opportunity to like flail and like wiggle up until you like float to the surface. Yeah, it's kind of like, and like, I don't want to bring it to beach whale, but that was the only time yeah. ever where it was kind of like, you're just like, beach really, the best possible and you're move. like, and then you're like, three, two. <laughs> you're, you're three, two, and then everyone else is like, watching you do it. You're like, <laughs> anyways, you guys, like, <laughs> on to the next one. Yeah. I will say those bars though. I know you in the bar. Me in a bar, hand in hand. You just love, you love to like, engage your whole body in something. I do. And you love to swing and swivel. Swing, swivel, and swoop. spin, and swoop. I'm always swooping. Those bars, you put a little powder on that hand. You're Gabby Douglas. I'm Gabby Douglas. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> I get on that bar. I hoist myself up. I throw my stomach over that bar. Right. And then I do that spin. I land... Full dismount. I'm sure. Every time. Every single You've time. You've always been someone, like, even outside of a gymnasium <laughs> that is fully dismounting. If there was a bar, if there's honestly just a straight line, <laughs> you know what I mean? If there's yeah. a straight line, I have one foot in front of the other, I jump both feet out, I swing those arms out, I come back together, and I stick my hands up for the landing. stick that landing. And I'm like... <laughs> It's incredible. Anyways, Fab Five shit. Not only Fab Five Olympians, but Fab Five Queer Eye. You're even, all five members of Queer Eye in one. I do believe, like, I mean, like, that is a lot of my personality. We're, like, that's also publicity. So interesting. But it really is a lot of my personality. I think all of them, because especially right when I came out, like, the only two things I was watching, because I was like, what do gay people watch? Was Queer Eye and Drag Race. So it's like, <laughs> it's kind of it's, like... It doesn't add up. It just, like, so adds well. up. It's Jamie like... people who... Will have that experience with good children. Yeah. They, like that. You think there's a bunch of little, like, upcoming gays being like, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, you're, I think that's exactly what's happening. What yeah. About, but, what? what about you? What about you? What was your favorite type of party? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you were so scared. <laughs> I'm so sorry to catch you off guard. I know that I was 
a fan because at one point I did give straight. I was mask at like seven and I loved, come on, I you love were. laser tag. Oh my God. Joe, we're going to get into laser tag, but like you loved a shooting game. You loved a shooting Yeah. Yeah. Again, I know that we've talked about I have all of the parts of a serial killer. Everything. Like, all of the pieces. Halo, I'm watching you play it. Like, everything. I loved Halo so much. I remember playing a game in middle school called... Please. No, it's so fucked up. No, um, I'm so scared. It was, like, my middle school friend group, besides you, like, the boys that I was friends with. Remember my sleeveless sweatshirt? Oh, yeah. That was one of the worst days of my life. That was it. My wore the sweet, sleeveless forever sweatshirt. Forever... My sister had a job at Forever 21. I They had just started the Forever 21 men's section in Sunrise Mall. I went in there and I saw in the Forever 21's men's section a sleeveless zip-up hoodie that had a star that was sequined. A sequined star and like a few other like tattered edges to it. And it was seventh grade and I wore it to school with a tank top. So I was, like, walking around middle school, like, in a zip-up hoodie all the way zipped up that was just, like, sequins. Wait, and you were like, I'm getting And everyone was making fun of me. No. The whole school day, everyone was making fun of me. Oh, that's so sad. All day. And I had to just, like, grin and bear it. Like, I was, like, stuck in the outfit all day. And, like, I got home and I was like, I'm never wearing that again. Oh, that's I remember one girl being like, it wouldn't have been as bad if you wore a t-shirt underneath. Like, you shouldn't have (laughs) worn a tank top underneath. Like, it's sleepless already. (laughs) But now, now, you would rock something with that. I would not wear that. I would not wear the sleeveless sweatshirt ever. No. No, for sure not. I really thought I was, I wish I had a picture of it. I thought it was so cool. I thought it was so, so, so cool. Sun's out, guns out for you. Yeah. Oh, that's what sweet. But back to laser tag. Were we getting sized up? I'm sorry. I have to tell the Halo story and then I'm done okay. telling stories for the rest of the episode. Okay, please. I'm done, the, I'm done with the show. We were all in like a Halo group chat together and we used to play a game called Smear the Queer. Where one person Joe. had to wear like, one person's armor had to be pink. Oh my and God. everyone else's goal was to kill that one person. <gasps> yeah. Um. So... We're Isn't signing off. Crazy? Signing off. Isn't yeah, that that's actually insane. Thank Smear God I wasn't there to experience Smear it. Smear the queer. <laughs> Why am I going to cry? Stop. You always take me. My stories can just be light anecdotes <laughs> depending on your response to them. And you always are like, oh my, you should I'm be like, in therapy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, Joe, that's not good. That's really not good. Um, laser, laser tag. tag. Love it. Love it. I mean, like, the thing about laser tag, especially for somebody like us, like, we were going into that room. They line you up, right? They They line you up. They they walk you into the next room and they They fit you. They size you up and they look at those vests and they're like, We'll give you the adult XL. They're like, You're 10 over there. Yeah. And I'm like, What the fuck? But okay. I was always scared. I could see you right now. I can see the anxiety on your face in laser tag. Like, yeah. You're, you're just waiting for the pizza. I'm waiting for the pizza. I'm hiding behind a rock and I'm staying at home base. I'm honestly hitting people physically with the gun. <laughs> like, I am like, get, like, that's where all of my aggression was taken out. That and choreography. I was like shooting, shooting, yeah. shooting, and I was also screaming on the top of my lungs. There is something crazy about the fact that we just like let a bunch of kids loose in like a dark arena with guns. It, yeah. Uh, that's very Hunger Games y. It is. Um, and it's... very like, what's the pipeline there? What... Actually, so fun though. It's so much fun. I like want to do it now. Do you remember the last time we did it together? Was it like it was like two years ago? Um, I have for no me concept. it was 2014. <laughs> you might be right. I have no concept of time. It was when I had just broken up with Sarah, my high school girlfriend, and the three of us went to laser tag two days later. Joe loves to thrust me into a situation I where it's it. like I'm mediating everything. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> they just broke up. It's definitely awkward. And I'm like, Sarah, you're literally stunning. You look, um, <laughs> you literally look amazing today. Let's play some laser tag, you uh, guys. Yeah, yeah. It was fun, but yeah, I was always waiting for the pizza. I was always waiting for the cake. That was the picture. That's the picture where I'm looking over my shoulder. We are, at you the are, counter. You're giving. I'm giving lesbian. You're giving. Yeah. I'm Rosie-o. giving Rosio. Um, <laughs> because with that cutoff tank and that and haircut, that smirk, and that, that knowing smirk, look. But that is the thing about laser tag. You're going to get pizza. You're going to get pizza. And, and you get to wear an all black outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're looking actually the Wait. slimmest you've ever looked. <laughs> Were you dressing for your figure as a child? Did you as get concerned a... about like vertical stripes and things like that ever? Never in my life. I was. 
Joe, As I have, a child? I just had a lot of, that's not only body issues, it's gender issues to work through. Yeah. Girl, because I was like fully, I was just like a member of Weight Watchers, you know, like not actually, but emotionally and spiritually, I yeah. should have been at Weight Watchers. Yeah. Because I was like dressing for my figure. I was like trying to do the no carb diet. I you was were like doing South Beach. Dialing up Jenny. I wish. You wish you the were. The amount that we wanted to call Jenny. Have you called Jenny yet? Have you called Jenny yet? We would, I would like drop that in school. I remember being like, mom, like, it's like can deep? we just like see how much it is? Like there's a chance that I really want to call Jenny. Oh, you were serious about getting I Jenny on the line? I just wanted to get her on the phone. Holy shit. I lost 200 pounds on Jenny Craig. Who like, is Jenny? I always thought Jenny was, who's the face of Jenny Craig? Kirstie. Kier- Kirstie Alley. Kirstie Alley. Oh yeah. my God. So Kirstie Alley and Jessica Simpson, like, Obviously, that's why I wanted to call Jenny Craig. I had, like, a weird thing with Kirstie Alley. Like, I kind of stand her at one point. Yeah, she was an icon. She was. She's gone down a crazy rabbit hole. She's, like, nuts now. But, like, at one point, I was legitimately, like, she was my favorite celebrity at, like, nine years old. Because her full brand also was Jenny Craig. <laughs> yeah, I was like, she's iconic. I think she did Dancing with the Stars, too. I was like, yeah. this is all I ever needed. Yeah. She did, remember that movie, The Tooth Fairy, that she was in? The Tooth Fairy. And it was on like Disney Channel, I yes. think. And they said hell in it because she rode the Hellivator. And I was like, whoa, we're getting edgy for Disney Channel, you guys. Like, <laughs> you were like, I hope my mom doesn't see Mom, I'm going to cover my ears. Birthday, birthday dinner. Show. Birthday dinner. Birthday dinner. How do you feel about a birthday dinner? What does that mean? Oh, you, like if some, if now as an adult? And now as an adult, a birthday dinner. Like planning I, the birthday dinner, also having people come to listen, a birthday dinner. Say I don't want, I. I don't want to tear anyone down and I don't want to make any irrational statements that I might regret later on in life. Yeah. Say if it. you host or plan a birthday <laughs> dinner, you are a terrorist. Absolutely. And I, that makes me number one. Number one. On the watch list. <laughs> I feel like having to attend and no and again, I love my friends. Having to go to a restaurant of your choosing where I have to get like fifteen drinks. Yep. Entrees, appetizers, yep. dessert, yep. and then split the bill, and you're not gonna pay. I'm I have to pay for pay. a portion of your meal. I know. I don't know about that. It is. It is sometimes I'm competing also with the wedding. Gift. It's competing I love with to get a gift. I love giving a gift. Yes. So I'm like, I got you a gift, and your gift is also this like eighty nine dollar bill for yep. dinner. No. Yep. Birthday dinner, birthday song, happy birthday, birthday out to dinner, dinner traumatizing. traumatizing. Yeah. yeah. When when the waiter and waitress or waitress is singing happy birthday to you, no. they're coming from behind. You're like, I'm caught off guard. I'm mortified. Are you, do you love it? I honestly don't love it. I, if it was like an intimate setting and there wasn't that many people in the place, like, yeah, but when the eyes are on me, this is the thing the about me. Do I like attention? I've been trying to grapple with this. Do I like attention? Yes. Yeah. I don't like unwanted attention. Right. Right? So, like, that's why a lot of the times, like, if that was happening, I'm like, now everybody's looking at me, and I wasn't in control if people were looking at me. So, for- Because you have a control issue. I have a huge control issue. Yeah. I mean, same, obviously. Yeah, we both do. But I know for you, I think it probably- hurt i can't project this but i feel like you get a little bit more anxious with the birthday song um dinner yeah like i think that it's like i'm sitting down i'm 11 years old and i'm at tgi fridays it's my birthday i'm already i've already expressed it very clearly in the car do not under any circumstances tell anyone don't even say the word birthday at this table yeah when someone gets up to go to the bathroom I feel ultimate betrayal. Yep. I'm like, I'm never going to trust again. Mm-hmm. I need to get out of here as soon as humanly possible. And God forbid someone from another table joins in on no, celebrating it's like, my birthday. You don't know Mind me. Business. Keep Mind my name business. out of your yeah. mouth. Yeah. Don't sing. Don't. I don't need it. The no. claps afterwards. The most you can offer to a stranger who's being sung happy birthday to in a restaurant is a it's gentle condolences. smile. <laughs> Your condolences. <laughs> I'm like, I'm really sorry. I'm yeah. sorry for you. Honestly, yeah. And like going forward after your first traumatizing experience with that, then you really do keep tabs of people. Yeah, that are going you can't to the ever enjoy dinner again. And if you're trying to, if you have to shit your pants, you're not getting up to go to the bathroom. Because That's a personal problem that you have. Joe. Have you ever shit your pants? That's a crazy question to ask. Have I ever shit my pants? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Often. Yeah. In a restaurant? Um, 
I don't know if at a restaurant. I've definitely like thrown up all over a restaurant before, <laughs> but, like multiple times. You're still not ready to unpack the. I don't think it's ready for this episode. Okay. From restaurants to classrooms, being sung happy birthday to. Are you loving that? Yeah. I'm, of course I'm loving when people are singing to me happy birthday in my class. And I honestly, like, John, on behalf of everybody, I do want to apologize for you not having the ability to celebrate your birthday in school. Oh, you're not going to apologize for the cupcake situation? I, did we also talk about this already? Because it's just like, you I definitely, feel like i definitely I've, talked about it. I think like, I've, like, literally said sorry. The wound is still fresh. The wound is still fresh. It was, I had to be about 15 years ago. Never forgot. Never forget. Um, and I will never forget that moment. You know, but... But I also never got to experience it. You didn't. It was a summer birthday. Because I would come into school, my mom would, like, whip up cupcakes. Right. She would be piping that frosting. And I would walk in and I'd be like, it's April 30th. I have the best cupcakes in school. Who wants to do the rounds with me? And it wasn't you. And that's fine. And that's fine, Joe. I would pick you today. In retrospect, I do think... As an adult, I would not mind. <laughs> so, you know, I've grown. I've grown since you have fourth grown. grade because it's similar to me hosting a birthday party and not talking to you. Yeah. Duh. Why would, why would I need to be the one to distribute the cupcakes with you? It doesn't yeah. make any sense. I do remember the ultimate privilege in elementary school was then taking the cupcakes and going to your other classrooms and you step out into the hallway. That was the coolest feeling in the entire world was walking into like a second grade class you're in fourth grade and you're like, you guys are fucking babies and I have cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're little losers. Hey, bitches, you're in kindergarten. I'm actually eight. You're strutting past them. You're like, hey, Mrs. <laughs> you want a cupcake? It's my birthday. <laughs> She's like, yeah, sweetie. Like, Happy birthday. And you're like, thanks. There was it's my birthday. Su- <laughs> such a superiority complex being in fifth grade yeah. upon all other grades. Yes. Like, you couldn't tell me anything. No. And then you go into sixth grade and it's game over. Oh, yeah. I, you might as well just shove me in the locker. Yes. And were you ever shoved? I was. You were shoved? How could you fit? I re- I'll never forget. <laughs> it wasn't middle school. For sure, it wasn't middle school. It was freshman year. Freshman year of high were school. Were they really big lockers? My no, lockers no, they were literally big. large lockers. Okay. And okay. I was like going through my like little skinny stint. Um, but it was like okay. large lockers and it was freshman Friday. And I was like, is freshman Friday an actual thing? Or are people just like making that shit Is that up? when you get bullied? That's when you get bullied. And I think it's just like a day for like people. Freshman just, like, Friday. Beat, like beat up gay kids. Yeah. yeah that's okay. what it was. I was walking around. This one kid that was on the swim team was like, I'm going to pick on this this freshman. The freshman was me. Oh um, and then he literally, I'm not kidding, pushed me in the locker, shut it for a second. I was literally freaking out. And then he opened it in like two seconds. And then I was fine. And then he punched me. But not in the face, but in the arm. Why have you had like some of the most disturbing experiences <laughs> of all time. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like nothing happened to me. No, I actually <laughs> like, was like dragged through filth. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember animal parties? Um, no. This can't be an isolated experience that only I've had. Explain it. Explain it because I'm gonna you would, remember. Like, go it. to someone's house or someone's backyard, and like, uh, someone dressed as Steve Irwin, rest in peace, would have like a bunch of exotic animals that they would like pass around. No, never been to one of those. Yes, you have. Like, they'd have. Like, a I big love boa, animals too. Like, like, like I love Lisa's constrictor dog. and like a tortoise and like other exotic, like an iguana, and you would like sit in a circle, and the person would be like, "This is a ball python." Like. It could kill you, and then like fifteen kids would hold it up for a picture. You I know? think that that's where we differ here, is because you like you loved that shit. You had an animal party. Oh, then yeah, I went to one. Flip I there. wanted to be in a kitchen. Yeah. Don't put me near the animals. No. I don't want to be near anything Baking besides parties. a dog. Oh Baking. my god. Oh yeah, that what? kitchen. I actually, Joe, the way that you just said that, and I am not going to do goosebumps. that for like. Was that the best day of your entire life? Yeah, of course, it's the best day of my life we're like making pizzas from homemade dough do kids still have those experiences they have or is to. it all like frozen themes now N- no we i think doing, like like home ec sometimes as a party i was like cracking an egg yeah i was like eight years old and we were making brownie batter and i wanted to like shove that spoon in my mouth movie theater parties yeah. what were your thoughts movie theater parties i just like you didn't want to have a party you no, know what you i mean like you anyone. didn't want to talk to a literal anybody it's the same as a movie date yeah. If I'm going on a date with you to the movies and it's one of our first five dates, 
what is the objective? You really, like, are we just going to see a movie? It's, like, kind of confusing for me. I've never been on a movie date, like... Ever um, in your life? Ever in my life. Wow. Yeah, Joe, like, I don't go on dates. Okay. Um, But movie dates, for me, I always think they're making out in the back row. I know, What's I've only about? experienced that, like, one time on a movie date, and otherwise, again, I'm the problem. Wait, I'm literally so jealous. What, that I've made out in a in movie the, theater? Yeah, like, I feel like that's, like... The dream. It was to like, it was to this movie called Beach Rats, which like came out in like 2017. It's like this like dark, weird drama mm. like about like gay youth, and like I was like literally like hard out of my mind in the back row making out. <laughs> like, and, like, there was like an older gay couple near us, and I was like they were judging me, and they were like, "Yes, get it, get it, get it." But and as was, a like, kid, I would me. always see these dates, and I would. That's so weird. I always would look behind me and hoping that you'd see someone make out. Yeah freaky voyeurist but yeah you didn't want to talk to a single soul yeah i will say they included the popcorn and they normally had candy which was really really sweet of them that's why i like the movie theater party you love a good d bag i love a good d bag you're so right i love a goodie bag i was sizing those goodie bags up immediately i was shaking them Mm -hmm. i was like what do we got in here especially when you couldn't see through it i was like nerds (laughs) <laughs> nerds are in here and I would pop those things open and the goodie bag would be gone before I even left the party you're someone also who I feel like um, you kind of skipped the line when it came to like dessert at a party yeah like if the cupcakes sure. were on display mm-hmm. like most like in my opinion like I wouldn't touch the cupcake can I have these can I have one yeah you would go right for it yeah Say, like you, I, you would always be like um Samantha's mom made the best cupcakes you have to try one yeah. <laughs> you're so good you're like Andrew like they're meant for two hours from now. just started. Like, Mom said it's okay. But yeah, no, I was always skipping the line. I never felt rules applied to me in that sense, which is strange because I am a rule follower. But with when it comes to food, rule, yeah, when but it when comes it comes to, to food, food, there's the rules are thrown out the window. Nope. Opening fridges. I'm doing anything I can yeah. possibly do to get my You're little creepy opener, crawler a hands. fridge opener. I am a fridge opener. And I know there are other fridge openers out there. It's like... Yeah. When you feel comfortable, you're going to go into somebody's home and you're going to swing that fridge open. And when you're me, you're going to actually almost starve to death because you refuse to say that you're hungry in someone else's house. Yeah, which is so strange. I would never let myself starve like that. Support for Good Children is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for all of your grooming needs. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million individuals worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code GOODCHILDREN at manscaped.com. GOODCHILDREN at manscaped.com. Okay. The mecca of all parties. Pool parties. The mecca? The me- No, I'm saying the mecca for anxiety. I was say, if you make the seventh circle of hell, and I would pick pool parties. Yeah. Snacks at a pool party are good. Yeah, there's always chips and dip, and you obviously know that I'm... Your hands are a little bit wet. My hands... Oh, my God. You're (laughs) out of the pool. You're literally, like, don't even have enough time for the towel. You're shaking your hands off. That Lay's ruffle chip is so soggy, but you got that French onion dip, so that's all that matters. Yeah. It's really good. As a kid getting invited to a pool party, I'm either RSVPing no, or... (laughs) I'm going and saying, I forgot my bathing suit. That sucks. You forgot your bathing suit. Yeah. yeah. Forgetting your bathing suit was like honestly the best way to go until they were like, you can oh my God, you were my dad's. dad's. Yeah. And you're like, mm-hmm. no. I'm like, no, I'm 11. I don't need your full grown 45 year old dad's bathing suit. And that, you put it on and it's a little bit tight. And you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. That's an adult men's large. But I but was always like, you're kind of like, balls were in this. You're kind of like, Oh my I'm god! Like, I'm in your. <laughs> I'm literally in your dad's board shorts. I'm like, okay, like let me get back in that pool. Like it's like literally whatever. When did I realize that it was actually called a bathing suit? I would say you were 16 years old yeah. when you texted me and said, "I'm bringing my bathing suit." <laughs> And I was like, maybe it's a typo, but... No, I literally would be like, oh, bathing. yeah, I'm going to wear my bathing suit. Bathing, bathing, bathing suit. You're like, Andrew, no, it's bathing suit. I was like, <laughs> it's not B-A-I-T. I thought it was like fish bait. It's kind of like when I thought lip sync for so long was lip sync. That's a lot more normal than bathing suit. No, I mean, because like my mom would talk, everyone was talking, and I was like, you got to bring your bathing suit. You're going to bring your bathing suit. You never saw it written down once? No, I never was trying to write it down once. Can we talk about 
the acrobatic routine that is keeping everything from nipple below below the water. Yeah, fully submerged. You don't want so you're like in two and a half feet of water, laying in a squat. like a slug. Like yeah. yeah, fully squatted to be like everyone else is standing up and they're like up, it's up to their <laughs> knees. And you're I'm the tallest flat. one at the party with the shortest one in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like they're like, wait, why are you guys like not standing? Why up? are you kind of drowning? Fully, I'm really. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, you guys. I'm like, it's like cold. It's windy. I want to stay under the water. Yeah. Uh, oh. That sucks. That sucks. I'm sorry. I'm, I almost threw up. I'm speaking of throwing up. The food at a party. Why were we pretending that children could sustain themselves on uh, half one a half of, of a slice of pizza mm-hmm. after a day of physical activity and running around and screaming? That was hell. That was hell because you know what? At the end of the day, it really doesn't feel good when you say to yourself, I had four slices. Right. But and you really like, only had two. And this skinny kid had one. I used to performatively do that. Yeah. You like, weren't. I was never going to eat more than like the skinniest person at the party was because I did not want someone to have a reason to call me fat. Oh, Joe. So yeah. I was like, oh, I have to have like a quarter of a slice of pizza and water. Yeah. And then go home and binge eat. I couldn't be any different no, because the thing been... is like my eyes always lingered on that pizza and i always kept tabs on how many slices there were left and i also was never fully present at a party no because of the, the food. food while you weren't eating at those parties your parties it was like a catered event yeah i'll never that's the first time in my like conscious years that i got acid reflux and it was like whenever you started making your fucking dis disgusting s'mores cookies that ruined my stomach for the rest of my life disgusting is a relative term delicious they were they're delicious but they are or they were at least a quarter pound of cookie yeah. per cookie yeah. and i was eating like four of them at once and i'll never forget like I, the age where i should have been like getting the spins because mm-hmm. i was like so drunk at my yeah. birthday party i was sitting up in bed at night because i was like i have such bad acid reflux from eating seven s'mores cookies and like 10 slices of pizza and chips and cake, every other possible food option. But those cookies were my last straw. They were truly a full s'more wrapped in the cookie dough and they would bake and they'd be so thick and you would slice in and half. They were still like nice and soft. Oh, that they was were your so big good. showstopper at one point. That was my that... big show. I baked those for my sister's wedding for oh the goodie God. bags. Yeah. And that's why I'm kind of like, I need to get back on my cookie game. When we ultimately sell merch. Yes. There's going to be a cookie. In the boxes package. that we send out. Here's what I'm going to say to you guys. Like, if, if you want a customized cookie for free in each package, we're going to need to up shipping costs. It keeps me up. Because the way that I toss and turn thinking about this Dunkaroos cookie. Yeah. Speaking of my parties, I guess it's time to publicly apologize for the amount of um, emotional, psychological, mental trauma that I have placed upon every single person who has been in or around my orbit for the past decade. Thank you. And I will say to elaborate, it is as a result of the intensely specific themes in which I presented to the group and demanded to be costumed for even Mm -hmm. sometimes the simplest of events. Yep. You always threw a theme on your birthdays. There is nothing I love more. And it's, I mean, I, clearly than a themed costume yeah like any opportunity i have to get into a costume i'm taking i'd be sick to my that's why i love colonial williamsburg though i wanted to work there so (laughs) badly as a teenager like if i was like begging my dad to move to because you wanted to be in a costume yeah i mean obviously also like a dress in a bonnet abigail Abigail. yeah like that is why i had that costume yeah because it is my like i love costumes i don't you don't but i really don't and that's the one that like i know there's a lot of things that like we have differences and you know but like that's the one point of contention for me that i'm like every single party that you've ever had needed to be an elaborate costume idea and i can't just show up you know what i mean you and have like, to be I, the best dressed yes and like it for literally nobody else but myself i'm like i will always wait until the last minute and that's just how i operate and, and then sick, i'm sick, sick. sick. Yeah. I'm sick. I'm like, what am I going to show up? Joe's party is 2000s themed. <laughs> what am I going to wear? And what did I show up in? For Joe Cello's 2005? Yeah. You were in my sister's juicy sweatsuit and her Uggs. Yep. And you were closeted. closeted? Yeah. I was closeted. I was also in like a pink little... A little pink polo. And my mom was like, you look so good. <laughs> and I'm like, I literally know. Joe Cello began as my graduation party from high yep. school. 
that was my first taste of fame. Everyone had a media responsibility. It was basically like the Revolve trips. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're going to come to my party, you're going to take pictures, and you're going to post. Yep. And this was like pre-media marketing. Like, I was honestly like really (laughs) ahead of what was to come. Like, I was ahead of what Coachella was doing. You had backdrops. There was step and repeats. There was merch. There was photo opportunities. There was themed food. There was themed drinks. And there was required costumes. Yep. For every single backyard party on Long Island that I hosted. Yeah. And again, if put me in charge of a brand, because right. I could fucking catapult it. One of the cooler girls at St. Anthony's posted another girl. Just, she was like, Grace just Googled what Jochella is. To me, that was loaded because it yeah. meant one, that Grace Googled what Jochella is. Two, that this girl knew what Jochella was. Mm-hmm. And three, that she felt tweeting it other people who were reading it would also know what Jochella was. And I was like, I have made my impact. Yeah, Jochella was, was the graduation. talk of the town. I had graduated. I No one knew me at that school for anything. And I was like, and now you do and get used to it. You were actually dropping promo trailers. No, that's weird. Joe, <laughs> Joe that was really that was strange. That was really strange. But I'll never forget because like, while... I mean, honestly, anything that we do is strange, but, like, I accept everything with blind faith. Like, you would release a trailer, and I was like, that's the best trailer I've literally <laughs> ever seen. That was literally so good. They I'm going to reshare it, yeah. and I'm going to tell everybody that I'm going to Joachella. The promo for it was bizarre, because, again, it was, like, maximum a 20-person invite list, yeah. and it was, like, my close friends and cousins. Oh. And I had Anna Nicole Smith on a cupcake. Hi guys. Hi. Our mic stopped working in the middle of this episode, so you're gonna hear a noticeable sound quality drop. Mm-hmm. But I would argue that like the conversation quality only increases. Oh, absolutely. It's so classic that this happened, but you know what? It's yeah. still enjoyable. We're getting through it. We and are. We're doing it together. Yes. You have Jochellas. I really honestly didn't really have birthday parties growing up. I'll never up. forget the limo to Carmine's. But the limo? <laughs> if you were somebody who performatively got a limo no, to go so to your bitchy. birthday, it's, it's such so a bitchy. serve. I was in my classic pink and blue yes, plaid you finger if binds. You were button. looking, um, I would say, 55. 40. Close. Close. I was looking. Elderly, yes. and I was looking like I had children. You were, you had a mortgage to pay. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And a few college tuitions yep. on, your, on your blade. But I dragged everybody to Carmine's because I you knew. Didn't drag us. No, you, you guys willingly went. You, we glided on your wings to Carmine's. Yeah, you take a lot of my wings because when you get to Carmine's and you're getting those fried zucchinis. That's for fried those zucchinis. who don't know, Carmine's is like, I want to call it a chain. It's like not a chain, but it has the energy of a chain restaurant. Yes. There's a couple of them. There is. And I would I would say there is an anxious energy when you enter Carmine's. It's hell on earth. But you have to go because the food is so, so good. good. And it's family style. The fried zucchini is endless. Yeah. It's endless. And every portion there is insane. Like family and, style, it's like if your family is legitimately a small army. Yeah. You leave that experience the worst you ever felt in your entire life. Yeah. But it's worth it. Yeah. Because like you're getting the vodka sauce and then you're ending with the Titanic. And oh let me God. explain what the Titanic is. It definitely sinks your ship. Mm-hmm. It's definitely my heart's not going on after that one. <laughs> the Titanic is like a 10 scoop ice cream sundae that is then wrapped in like this chocolate shell yeah drizzled with all of those sauces with the whipped cream with the everything and it's it's quite fantastic that's the only time that i was like "Ah, you sing happy birthday to me the thing about me is like i love baking and we we just we just explained that i love baking but i was actually only watching like baking content buddy velastro cake boss I love the Cake Boss. Daddy. Cake Boss is one of those cultural phenomenons that, for me, like, touched children. Ooh, (laughs) that one. But do you know what I mean? I know what I mean. Like, that, John K Plus 8, Dance Moms. Why were those shows such cornerstones of my early childhood? Because, honestly, it was something about, like, a dominant personality. They're, like, always screaming. Why was everything so stressful? if you put... Abby Lee, Miller. Buddy Valestro, and Kate Gosselin in the ring. I what would watch happens? That. Like, 
What are you talking about? You dropped the cake. Shut up! Like everything, her scooting on the scooter, everything. Why was the entire the entire plot of Cake Boss genuinely every episode? Are they going to drop the cake? Uh, Anthony's bringing the cake down the steps. If it doesn't make it, this is over. But I loved Cake Boss, and I loved Cake Boss's reality show that he had. They're like, who's gonna be the next Cake Boss? So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch this intently. Like, this is like, yeah, this is, is this, It is me. taking everything out in me not to come at you with a serrated knife right now. Yes, that was Karina. You used to quote that all the time. That was Karina. It's taking everything in me not to come at you with a serrated knife right now. That was Karina, and that woman had an impact on me. So I was saying for my 15th birthday, it was like, Mom, Karina is a pastry chef. She lives on Long Island. She has a, a, a cake shop two towns away. I need a cake from her for my 15th birthday. We met with this woman like it was my wedding. She sat me down. She said, what are you interested in? What are you looking for? Do you want it shaped? Do you want it tiered? I said, I want a shaped cake, and I want it to be in shape of a sailboat. On that sailboat, I want a French horn. Did you... Are you obsessed with sailing? Is this a real thing you actually like? So this is the thing, I, I did love sailing growing up. That Why was, was a, I never aware of that? Because like you never asked. Oh, okay, let's just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my whole room is sailboat themed. I so know, I know, but I still wouldn't consider sailing like your main thing or even in the top 10. No, it was like something that like I did to like take my mind off of things, like in the oh summer. My God. It was definitely nice, it was definitely relaxing. Okay. But anyways, I did get a sailboat. I had a French horn on it, I had bagpipes on it, I had um, I had books because um, I was like I like studying. That was weird. It was weird. Everything about this is just, like insane. But it was a cannoli cake in fondant. I don't like the way you let that said. Fondant. <laughs> Fifteen years old. It was just for my family. Probably the most expensive cake I'll ever ever get for my birthday ever again. You you just keep racking up this birthday tab. Racking People up the birthday. People are this up and doing some math and canceling like, you. Ooh. <laughs> like, ooh, that was that was. You're gonna be like, and then the private jet for my twenty first. And I was like, literally, yeah. The but plane. I know that like that cake was amazing, and I for birthday cakes in general, like, what the fuck is up with fondant? It's what the fuck is up with that? That is like it's the cake boss effect. Like, why were we eating it? It tastes. So disgusting. disgusting. And I'll have a lot of it. Do you yep. know what I mean? You, and like, you ate it like it was raw. Like oh, I was dope. buying it from the package at Walmart and I was like eating it, yeah, fully yeah. like it was like a, a seaweed it's so stack. Th it's so thick. It's so thick, it's so sweet. It tastes like Play-Doh if Play-Doh tasted worse. And nevertheless, I persisted. All right, Joe. Oh my God. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Happy birthday to you. Wow. Yes. Making a wish. Please. <gasps> yeah, what are we eating, first of all? Today we're having ice cream. We're having a cups. I don't think it's a guilty pleasure to have your ice cream in a pint. No, let's normalize eating ice cream out of a pint. This is the best non-dairy ice cream I've ever had in my entire life. Actually, like, genuinely. Like, genuinely. We, had a, we had a pint yesterday, too, because we're like, we needed it. Um, and it is giving me Ben and Jerry's in the best way. In, in a sense of, like, it's so rich and creamy and yeah. chunky. So what did you wish for? I kind of, like... I don't think I have to make a wish because I really do think this is like truly a dream come true. I have to say, oh I think like my God. most of my childhood was spent like hoping to hang out with you as much yeah. as I possibly could. And I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, wow, like it's truly all I ever wanted yeah. was to like just spend as much time as possible doing things and making things. And now with this, I'm like, oh, I'm doing legitimately at this current level, at what we're currently doing, like, this is all I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. So I kind of feel like I got my wish this year. Oh my god, like, I'm actually gonna cry. Yeah, Yeah, it really true. is something we've always wanted. Always. always. done. It's and legitimately like, a dream. In the hopes of, like, making people laugh, but yeah. also just so we can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think as I'm aging and as I'm getting older, I'm like, if I had action on the things I actually wanted when I was 21, it would be this. But I do feel like when you are that age, you kind of have to 
it's almost like going in the wrong direction and kind of knowing it isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Like the things I've learned and like the lessons that I've taken from like my abusive workplace and like the friends who are no longer friends and like all of these things that I thought were important to me at one point, like do I wish they didn't happen? Not necessarily. Yeah, no. Because yeah. without having it, where would I be? Yeah. If I, I started mean, this podcast at 21, no one no. would listen. And it no. would not be good. It's all learning experiences. Yeah. And it's like, that's actually the point of life, right? Yeah. It's like, you're going through all these different things. I worked a sales job. I was selling travel, right? And it was a great company. I would never take that back. But like, I learned a lot of things along the way too. How to interact with people. How to communicate. How to like you know, create comfortable, inclusive environments, anything, tell my story, become myself. And now we became ourselves to a point where we can share that with, with the world. Yeah. It's kind of never too late to be yeah. yourself. Never. Oh my, oh my God. God. Oh the story you guys, is if you just be yourself. Good children. It's never too late like to, to be, be yourself. All that sappy emotion has me hoping to help someone else out. Yeah. And I think it's time for the, the girls room. How do I deal with a friend of 10 plus years who is extremely defensive about their opinions? Um, Joe, how do you handle it? Um, Honestly, I think for me, like growing up, not to say that you're super defensive. You just have, are very opinionated. I think I've calmed down a little yeah. bit but i was definitely the worst person yeah and for a while i let your opinions dominate like my thought pattern right because i was like okay i'm just gonna like go with what joe wants because that's what joe wants right. and, like i really don't care um but it is really important to learn to say what you want to say and, and let, let the words fall out, out. Because when you do speak up for yourself and like you challenge an opinion, that is how you are going to find the resolution, right? It's like you're how you're gonna grow. It's how you're gonna grow. It's how you're gonna find your medium because why are you gonna going to be a clone of somebody else or follow what other people want from you when you're literally just trying to figure out what you want? Yeah. I feel so much lighter after so this much. episode. Wow. We aired a lot out. Yeah, we kinda did. And who would have thought on our birthday, our birthday episode. episode? Yeah. I think it's going to be a really good year. I agree. And I'm really, I'm really glad that I'm spending it with you and with you, our with listeners. Everyone. Yeah, no, it's, I'm just so excited that like, there's a lot to look forward to. And if you guys want more of us, you know exactly where to find us on TikTok at Good Children Pod. I'm personally on TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky, M-U-S-K-Y. I'm on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. I'm posting some spawns soon. I need people to like and engage and share and comment. Please. Do it all. I can't do it all. We're on Instagram at Good Children Pod. Again, insane. The oh my God. No, I'm pissed. That account gets more story views than I do. <laughs> I'm like, okay. The lights are through the roof. It's, it's insane. Amazing. You post one story and say like a hundred responses. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yes. Yeah, but I'm wrong. I'm grateful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella, M-U-S-C-A-R-E-L-L-A. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges, H-E-G-Y-E-S. I'm also going to say it. There's a Musketeers fan page. Oh my God. There's yes, a, there is. There's a Musketeers fan page and like, I'm loving the content. Yeah, who is capturing that content? I actually like, genuinely have no idea. But they're like in our apartment sometimes, it almost feels they're like. They're sometimes in our apartment and it's literally They're not almost me. like in the frame right now. <laughs> they're like, <yeah. laughs> I just heard my newsletter, which I'm yes. actually gonna plug right now, I don't care. Yeah. Um, you can find it at the, on my link tree, but that's my first time in probably ever in my life that I'm putting like my writing out there, yeah. not in like video format. Um, and it's like, it was scary. I like read my essay 55 times before I posted yeah. it. And there are still typos, of course. But I was like, am I actually You're just human. a fucking fraud? I'm like, is this just not good? No. And regardless, I was like, I just have to get this out there. And if you love this podcast and you love nostalgia and you love everything, and we make you laugh, Joe's essays are like actually beyond nostalgic, but like, they're not going to make you laugh. No, it's they're going to the make you punch. genuinely feel something. That's my goal. Yeah. Your homework this week is to like, it is to subscribe, it is to press the bell button, it yes. is to comment, it is to share, it is to download on, there's a lot of homework this week. Yeah. It is to download on whatever podcast app you're listening to, it's to rate us five stars, 
feel free to send us a screenshot of proof of your rating and we will send you a video back and or a video of Andrew dancing. We were pumping out videos last night. It was like high stress almost. It no, was like I like loved it. Yeah, it was I like, literally oh loved it. It was we like so personal in a way. For the videos. We got, we actually though, like I was like, are we being creepy because we genuinely stalked the people's, everyone's pages and we're giving like hyper specific detail about the <laughs> cats. Like no J. <laughs> no, I literally love no J the black cat. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, please, I'm a sucker for a referral, so spread the good word. Like, I am reclaiming, like, the like, Christianity. Christianity. <laughs> like, people are knocking on doors, you know what I mean? Oh, we're going to be canvassing very soon. We're going to be canvassing extremely soon. And until then, we'll see you next week. See you next time. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday, happy birthday to ya. All right. I feel good. Me too. And I think maybe it recorded. Ah!